Are you confused with all the types of embroidery stitches out there? It can get overwhelming with the bean stitch and the satin stitch and the, the blanket stitch. In today's video, we're going to talk all about the different types of embroidery stitches and how to stabilize them. Hi, I'm Ashley, the Monogram Mompreneur. And on this channel, you will find embroidery and applique tutorials as well as I will give you small business tips and tricks. So, number one is the satin stitch. I feel like this is the one I am most familiar with as well as other people who are coming on to embroidery. The satin stitch is that classic um, thick stitch that we're used to seeing in monograms and applique. She's been queen for a while and she is one of my personal favorite stitches. Um, it's perfect for applique. It covers those placement and tag down stitches and it creates a nice expensive to me look. One of the downfalls of a satin stitch in which I think some of these vintage stitches have come along is satin stitches sometimes take a really long time to stitch out. Um, I know personally one of my son's um, back to school shirts took 92 minutes. That's just to stitch out. That's not including cutting, placement, ironing, anything. 92 minutes stitch out for a satin stitch. Um, so some of these vintage stitches take a lot less time and they look great if done correctly. So number two is a fill stitch and this one's been around for a really long time. Um, a fill stitch is what you would see in like a logo or those little um, like the little minis that are on like the, the boys polos like the little mini pumpkins or turkeys or sailboats. Um, anything that's filled in dense, almost like a clip art form of stitches, um, is the fill stitch. Um, again, one of my favorites. So those have, are like more of the classic stitches. Now let's get into the vintage stitches that are really popular right now that may help um, propel your business a little further. So the blanket stitch um, gives your applique a quilted kind of it looks kind of like a T um, quilted look with these vintage stitches I would recommend um, a medium cutaway or um, a no-show poly mesh using tear away on these vintage stitches could create a mess when you're trying to rip it off and you might pop a stitch so you need a little bit more firmness or durability with your stabilizers with these vintage stitches the zigzag stitch is just as stated it's a zigzag stitch. It is pretty much the overlay stitch if you're familiar with a classic applique. Um, with a typical applique with a satin stitch, there's a placement stitch, there is a tack down stitch, there's an overlay stitch, which is a zigzag, and then there's the final satin stitch. So this reminds me of that overlay. Um, with the blanket, the zigzag, the bean, when you're doing an applique and there's a placement stitch, you want to make sure that placement stitch is the same color as your final stitch. So if you're doing a blanket stitch and you're doing a pumpkin and it's orange final blanket stitch with the little T design, quilted design, you want to make sure that placement stitch is orange as well. I typically use white when I'm using a satin stitch, but I always make sure to match the color because you will have show through with these vintage stitches of that placement stitch. So you don't want white showing through um, your little pumpkin, so make sure you use orange or whatever color you're using um, with that placement stitch. So the zigzag stitch is probably the most forgiving of the vintage stitches because it's more like satin. Um, you have a little more leadway with your fabric cutting. The fifth stitch we're going to talk about is bean stitch or triple bean. Um, this is probably the trickiest stitch to applique with because when you're cutting around that stitch you have to be super careful not to cut the stitch and the fabric because the or the fabric too close because you might um, ruin the applique. It's the least forgiving because when you're cutting you have to be so precise and there um, everything is going to show with the bean stitch um, and make sure you're using heat and bond light with these vintage stitches on the back of your applique fabric. So bean stitch is just um, kind of like a classic sewing machine stitch but it'll go back three times to look like a little dot so I guess that's where they got the name bean stitch I don't know 
but it's a, you also want to make sure you're using a correct stabilizer for this one because um, these vintage looking need a little bit more stabilizer. Number six is a sketch stitch. Now sketch stitches have still not won me over yet because I like a good fill stitch. I'm all about it. But sketch stitches are less dense and kind of leave some white. Sometimes even some digitizers have some gaps in between. It's not my personal cup of tea. I prefer a solid fill, but maybe they'll wood me over. So a sketch stitch is our final stitch we're going to talk about. So no matter what type of stitch is your favorite, make sure you're following the trends, not only with your fabrics you're using in your applique, but also with the stitches that are popular. Um, it'll bring you more success if you are trying to sell something that the customers are demanding. If you're stuck in your satin stitch world, I would encourage you to try some of these new vintage stitches to really propel your business forward. So if you would, comment below your favorite type of stitch to use and your favorite place to buy um, these vintage looking stitches. I'll list some of my favorite digitizers below as well as some of the groups I'm in to really just get inspiration. Um, but please hit that subscribe button for more video to see more videos like this. Um, we can't wait to see you next week. Bye for now.